Go ahead and thank him beforehand for that. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanksgiving is the sacrifice of our lips. Hallelujah. Your name is blessed tonight. Your name is blessed tonight. Your name is blessed tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be lifted, oh God. Be lifted. Be lifted. Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to every heart. Reveal the word in particular ways that will minister to us as individuals. Let the light of heaven shine in our hearts tonight. Let our eyes be open tonight to be able to appreciate the reality of your word. We give you praise. We depend on you, Holy Spirit. We depend on your abilities. We depend on your, on your ways. We depend on your grace. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can have your seats. Thank you. Thank you. If you're watching online, thank you for tuning in. This is our word encounter. This is our Bible studies. We believe that the word will encounter your heart tonight, or God will encounter your heart through his word. Amen. God will encounter your heart through his word and speak to you, minister to you, impact your life. Amen. When a season of meditation, hallelujah. When a season of prayer, meditation is a part of prayer. So, in other words, we're in a season of prayer. But in a season of, you know, intimate prayer, not just talking. Because believers have a tendency when you say pray, people just talk. And at times, they don't even find the connection. You know, to be able to connect with God appropriately, they just talk. And if you can talk and feel good about yourself, it means you pray. But what meditation would do, it would push you further than just talking and it will give you a tool to use which is the word of God because a lot of us meditate or pray without the word of God we just pray we just talk and we don't have a, a framework by which we are believing we don't have a framework for our expectations and the word of God is supposed to be that in our prayer amen you cannot believe God for anything when you haven't found that thing in the word of God You, in other words, you cannot have faith when you have not known the will of God. How are you going to have faith when you're not even sure God wants to do that? Your faith is inoperative if the will of God is not known. And the will of, will of God is revealed in the word of God. So for you to be able to be in faith is for you to be in the word of God and find out what God's mind and God's will is concerning a particular thing that you're believing for. The moment, you see, faith, faith is not something that is complicated. The moment you're able to find out what God has said concerning a particular issue, the word itself will stir up faith for you to be able to take hold of that. Why you struggle in faith is because you're trying to believe in your head. You're just trying to believe something that is not founded. I mean, no one believes in your head. You're just, it's wishing and hoping. That is not faith. Faith is a substance. It has anchor. You ha it has, it, it's something that you're taking hold of. It's not a hope that something happens. It's not a wish that something happens. It is something that you've found out, you've discovered that God has said, and you're standing on it. Praise God. And meditation would do that. The Word of God would do that in your prayer. When you pray with the Word of God, you know, now you have something that you can stand on. You know what God has said concerning your situation. And meditation would do that a lot for you. Amen? On Sunday, we talked about, we defined what, I'm going to define that one more time, what meditation is. Hallelujah. We said meditation is spiritual digestion. In other words, you have studied the word because studying the word is not meditating in the word. Huh? There are a lot of theologians who don't know the word of God. 
I'm not saying I'm not saying that they don't know the word by in their in their in their in their in, in their minds because of course they studied that to write to do research they did research you know they, they wrote thesis you know they spend you know I spent a large part of my, my, my academic years doing that you know and I, I can tell I can attest to you that you can come out with a theological degree or the theology degree but you don't know the word of God amen because the word of God is not just known by memory. The word of God is known by spirit. Hallelujah. So you can, have the, you can have the knowledge, but the knowledge needs to be digested. Until the knowledge is digested, you don't have the life yet from that word. And meditation is one of the processes by which the word is digested. Hallelujah. The word is transformed from just being just being material word or from just being the, you know like I said the other the graphe the scripture to becoming the life meditation does that translation and translation for you amen I also said meditation is an exercise aimed at absorbing the truth it's an absorption mechanism you're absorbing the truth into your spirit you're absorbing it into your spirit so, you know, something that you have known for a long time, so all of a sudden it is shifting from just in your memory or uh, as knowledge to becoming reality in your spirit. You're absorbing the truth of God's word. I also said meditation is thinking through the word of God. Thinking. Thinking. Hallelujah. Some of you can quote some passages now, but if I ask you to take time to think on them, you'll find out that you're just beginning to think about some you've been quoting for a long time. Hmm? Okay, how many of you heard this, the, the scripture that says, by his stripes we are healed? How many of you have heard of that scripture? How many of you know what stripes are? What lashes? Praise God. You see how you, 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 if you were sure, you would, have, you would have shouted that thing out like real quick. Why are you doing that? Because you haven't thought about it. But you have it in your memory. You have not meditated on that scripture. That is why you can be sick and quote it 50 times and you're still sick. The moment you start meditating on that scripture, sickness will leave you permanently. Amen. May that be your reality, amen? That's why we're talking about this. That's why we're in this grace in this season. Hallelujah. Tell somebody now, I'm meditating, I'm meditating. Hopefully from Sunday to now, you have been meditating in the word of God. Hallelujah. You have been meditating in the word of God. It is thinking, 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 using your mind. Man. I'm going to emphasize that. Using your mind, using your mind in the word. Once your mind is set on the word, your mind will be overcome by the word and the word will find its way into your spirit. Amen? Thinking, you give time to think in the word. As you, as you read it, you give your mind allowance to think. As you're thinking, the Holy Spirit is enlightening it. Hallelujah. And your spirit is receiving that. Thinking through the word of God for an, you know, so that so that the goal of the thinking is so that the reality behind those, those stories that you read in the Bible will come out. God don't just want us to know those stories. God don't just want us to know that Jesus rode on a donkey. What does that have to do with us? Some of us never seen donkeys. So it may, not, it may not benefit us in any way until we meditate and get the reality behind what that means. Then it will benefit us. That's what meditation does. It cracks open the shell so that you can make contact with the reality that God wanted to convey to you. Praise God. Come on, tell yourself, I'm meditating in the word. It's an unveiling mechanism. It unveils stuff. It unveils as you give yourself time. And that's what one of, we're going to teach this one of, you know, in this season. 
one of the key things that the enemy attacks is your mind. There is a certain blindness that is called the blindness of the mind, not the eyes. Amen? Put 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Let's read that. Hallelujah. Is it whom the God of this world, we know who that is. They're talking about the enemy, talking about Satan. The God of this world had blinded the minds of them that do not believe. Their minds are blinded, not their eyes, their minds. The blindness of the mind is more powerful than the blindness of the eyes. Because the mind, the mind, once the mind sees the light of God, the mind can accommodate all that reality that is in your spirit. Because the mind is that faucet. Amen? I mean, you know, there's water in all these pipes passing around. Water, the pipe don't have problems with water. If water is not coming out here, it's that, that faucet is, if, if you don't open it, water will not come out. Because, you know, so your mind is like that faucet, you know. That connects, there's a connection to the source where water comes from, but until you open the faucet, water will not flow. So the source is God. The flow is the benefit. The mind is the faucet. It needs to be opened, and it's opened by meditation, the renewing of the mind. Amen? He said the God of this world had blinded the minds of them that do not believe. That is why they don't believe. Because you would think that, man, the God, why don't these people? I mean, don't they know? How, they know the stories. They all know the, they know the stories about Jesus dying. The story alone is not enough. Some of them acted those, the acted dramas and skits and all of that with those stories, but they still don't believe. So the story it alone is not enough to transmit reality. You need the shell to be cracked up. You need an unveiling. Tell somebody an unveiling comes by meditation. Come on, say like you believe it. An unveiling comes by meditation. There are a lot of realities locked up in those stories. But meditation will open them up to you. As you begin to give your mind time, the Holy Spirit begins to breathe on it. Hallelujah. You have, I, know you, I know you're a good reader. You read your Bible. You even study. You have notebooks. You have read. You have studied. But you have not started meditating. That is what God wants to do in your life. Amen? For most believers, especially devout believers, they want to hear meditation. They think, ah, that's weird. Because they're thinking, like we talked on Sunday, Eastern meditation. They're thinking yoga. They're thinking closing of the eyes and folding, you know, crossing the knees and emptying the mind and becoming one with the universe. That is not what we are talking about. We're talking about biblical meditation. Amen? Biblical meditation. It is thinking. You think through the word of God. And as you're thinking through the word of God, your mouth is declaring the same. Because med Christian meditation or biblical meditation, I don't want to say Christian meditation. I'll tell you why I don't want to say that. Because there's a thing called Christian science. And it's not Christianity. Ooh, I'll say that again. The Christian science is not Christianity. Why are you looking at me funny? I, I say Christian science is not Christianity. Scientology is not Christianity. I can just go down a long list, but now I'm going to cause a lot of problems. Amen? Thinking through the word, thinking through the word and declaring it with your mouth is medicine. And we talked about several scriptures on Sunday. Today we'll talk about, I mean, we, 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 took, we talk about about five or six benefits of meditation. If you don't, you need to, if you don't, you, you were not here, you need to watch that so you can, we can be on the same, on the same page. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We'll talk, we'll talk, we'll talk about We'll talk about, we'll, I wanted to deal with two scriptures tonight. Two scriptures. Two scriptures on meditation tonight. You know, if I can pass these scriptures in, it will really help you. 
you know, two scriptures on meditation that will really help tonight to move us forward in this, in this season. The first is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. We touched it on Sunday a little bit, but I want us to look at it again. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15. It will help you, it will teach you a lot on what meditation is and how to practice the same. Hallelujah. Get this definition down. I'm adding as we go. I'm just going to be adding the def- You can have a whole page of definitions because I'm trying to help put in such a way that you can practice it for yourself. Biblical meditation is the practice of pondering, visualizing, and practicing scripture. Somebody say pondering, visualizing, and practicing. Those three things should remain in you. It should remain in you. Pondering, visualizing, and practicing. Hallelujah. Pondering, visualizing, and practicing. In other words, you think about it, you give it time. It creates pictures in you, in your mind. And then you apply those scriptures, those pictures that have been painted in your mind. You put them to work. Amen? It's not just reading or studying the Bible. It's, it's not just even thinking alone. It's not thinking about Scripture. It is thinking Scripture. I want to read, I'm, I'm trying to make that. It's not thinking about Scripture. It is thinking Scripture. I don't even understand the difference. It is not thinking about Scripture. It is thinking Scripture. Amen? So you're actually thinking what is being said, not about what is said. Amen? You will reap the benefits from this. I'm telling you the truth. It is, it is contemplating the truths of God's word. In other words, if I'm going through the day, scripture should be in constant circulation in my mind. You don't have to read a lot. You have to just pick a scripture and keep in your mind as you go through the day. Praise God. You'll be amazed how much you can get from out of those scriptures. Because it will be you chewing on those scriptures throughout the day. And as you chew, the benefits will come out. Amen? Scriptures constantly circulating in your mind. So that your mind becomes God-conditioned. Praise God. That scripture in 2 Corinthians, you know, it it says, chapter 4, verse 4, it says, "The, the God of this world has blinded the minds of those that do not believe. Put it, let's see what will happen if their minds were not blinded. Otherwise, the light, somebody say light. That's what the enemy is afraid of. You see that? Because once the light shines in the mind, the reality can be appropriated. The blindness is so that the light should not shine. The light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, should shine unto them. In other words, if that light can shine, you will understand what you, what you have been saying, what you have memorized, the thing you have been acting in, in dramas, you will now understand it once the light shines. So the blindness is to keep the light from shining. But what meditation does is that it opens the door for that light to shine. Amen? Let the light shine in this season. In the name of Jesus. Because the mind is a connecting bridge between the spirit realm and the natural realm. Because everything God wants to do, God can do it in your spirit. When God talks to you, where does he talk to you? 
He doesn't have a problem doing that. God will talk to your spirit. You know why? Because he has put his light in your spirit. The Bible said the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. He put his candle so he can communicate with you. Proverbs 20, 27. There's, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching the inward parts of the belly. God has put light within you. When you. If you're a child of God, God has put light within you. So that he can be in touch with you. I'm passing, my God tonight is pass, pass these few scriptures across. And go, God has put his light. He put light. Because without the light of God, your soul is in total darkness. In other words, people who are not saved, they are in darkness. Amen? They are in darkness according to the word of God. Because the spirit of man, the spirit of man that has come alive, the recreated spirit of man, is God's lamp. So if God is going to make contact with you, God is going to use that lamp. He's going to talk to your spirit, your spirit. Not, see, he talks to you, not your mind, not your body. But now, what God has revealed into your spirit has to become a living experience. How is it going to happen? If the mind doesn't give it way, if the soul doesn't, it would, your body, your, the physical part of you will never see it. In other words, God will speak to your spirit. God will reveal answers to your spirit. You will never experience them. Because there is this wall of limitation, which is your soul, especially your mind. Because your mind, what your mind does, it connects to what God has deposited in your spirit and brings it out to the physical. So, so the enemy knows where to block. So if he blinds the mind, God can do all he wants in the spirit. The man would never see it. That's why there's the blindness of the mind. That's why it is so powerful. If he blinds the mind, what God does in the spirit, you will not experience it. That Christ died on the cross for to save your sins, it will be a story to you. How are you going to know the reality of that? It just be a story like you learned in, in, you know, in Sunday school. And you will never understand what that really means personally. But when we preach the gospel and people hear, the gospel comes with light so that the light, so they, there can be some kind of penetration through your soul. And once that light comes on, you can believe the gospel. And it's the same way as we meditate in the word. The light comes on as it comes. We can now see what God really wanted to say to us through the word. The word would not just be a story anymore. It will become a living reality. Are you with me? I'm taking time because meditation, it can, be, it can be a tricky topic to teach. I'm taking time. Slowly so you can get something. Amen? So I'm meditating and I'm having divine results. As you read what God has said concerning you, you set your mind on it. You set your mind on it. And you begin to declare that in your life. You set your mind on it. You don't have, I, I, I'm try, I want to make you real basic. You set your mind on it and then your mouth is declaring it. Your mind is set on it. Your mouth is declaring it. Your mind is set on it. Your mouth is declaring it. You'll be amazed that whatever God has said, will be created in the natural. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> First scripture for tonight. Psalm 119. Let's do that first. Yes, yeah, Psalm 119. Let's leave the other one for 1 Timothy. Let's Psalm 119. Verse 148. 148. Let's do that. Psalm 118. He said, my eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in your word. My, my, my eyes prevent, that's King James for saying that my eyes stay open through the night. Through the night watches. 
that I might meditate in your word. My eyes stay open through the night watches, so through the watches of the night, that I might meditate on your word. It's not just talking about physical eyes. Physical eyes are a part of it, but it's talking about the eyes of the mind. I, 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 I lay in my bed, I'm thinking the word. I found myself last night doing that. You know, I just lay there and, I, uh, you know, the word, I'm, my mind is set on the word. And I'm thinking what I want to see happen. Hallelujah. My eyes are awake through the night watches. There's an anticipation in my spirit through the night watches. To make contact with something that God has said. How many of you know the story of Jesus walking on water? Matthew 14 verse 25. Put that for us. Matthew 14 verse 25. I want to just show you a little something there. Matthew 14, verse 25. The Bible, we know the story. Jesus had come. They've come from, I think, from 5,000. Jesus went up the mountain to pray. Went to pray in the evening and prayed all night. And then the Bible says in the fourth, uh, in the fourth watch of the night. I want you to look at that phrase. The fourth watch of the night. Jesus came unto them walking on water. What was the fourth watch of the night? Because during that season, the nighttime was divided into four different segments. The first segment started from, who knows, who can tell us that? Started from 6 o'clock. Ooh, who said that? Wonderful. Look at that. It started from 6 to 9 p.m. That's the first watch of the night. Because the night time started, you know, they call it the first watch. And then from 9 p.m. to midnight to 12 a.m. is the second watch of the night. And then from 12 midnight to 3 a.m. is the third watch. And then the fourth watch is from 3, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. Imagine that. This man had been in the water all night struggling. And then Jesus showed up between 3 to 6. The fourth watch. Jesus had been up on the mountain all night to 3 a.m. in the morning. Are you with me? Are you with me? Because as, he, as this is my, my, my conviction, as Jesus went up there to, to pray, he began to meditate on the reality. Because what meditation does, it lifts you up into the reality of what God has said. It removes you from everything. Else. As you begin to focus and zoom on what God has said, you begin to think it through. You begin to ponder it. You begin to contemplate. You begin to declare it with your mouth. You begin to declare it with your mouth. You are removed from the limitations and lifted into a reality that was not your experience. Amen? In other words, I'll give you an example. In other words, like I said, I'm speaking to most of your students. You know, you're, you're, you have an exam coming and you're scared. You're scared of how you're going to pass this exam. You heard all the stories. And, and you're talking, you're having a conversation with a few friends. You're talking about, you know, you know, um, you know, the teacher is so bad. That exam is so hard. You know, I can't make an A. You know, I, I, you, you. Let me tell you what you're doing. I'm telling you the truth. What you're doing, you are already pondering. You're visualizing. And you're practicing your failure. What are those three things again? Pondering visualizing and as you're talking like that you will see yourself failing in other words you're meditating but it's on the reverse you're pondering you're visualizing you're practicing and before you know it you cannot get out of a feeling a feeling a, 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 a response or, or outcome you can't you will not be able to get out of a failing outcome because you have been meditating, but it's been on the contrary. But the moment you begin to see, you begin to think about what God has said, you begin to think about it, you begin to visualize it, your results will be exactly what God has said concerning you. Amen? 
So I can believe Jesus up the mountain praying and meditating because the more you, you meditate, the more you meditate, the light of the word gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And before we knew it, Jesus came walking on water. As you begin to meditate in this season, as you begin to practice, you go from one level to another. I'm telling you, the light of God in your life will get stronger. Amen? This word meditation means, again, it means to what? To ponder. You think about something carefully. You're thinking about it. Hey, I want to succeed in this area. What has God said concerning that success or concerning that area? I begin to think about it specifically and carefully. I'm pondering. Amen? I begin to think about that stuff specifically and carefully. I dwell on it. Come on, somebody say dwell on it. I dwell on it. I, do, I told you, God told Joshua, hey, hey, meditate in the word. You're about to face challenges. Ponder, let success dwell in your mind. Let success dwell. Let success dwell. Remove all limitations of failure. But you cannot remove them by themselves. You remove them by the word. By meditating in the word. Chew the word over and over. Ruminate. Ruminate over it. In other words, premeditate what is going to happen. Oh. I said premeditate what is going to happen according to the word of God. Amen? You premeditate what is going to happen according to the word. And the Holy Spirit will even show you even more, more, more. You premeditate what's going to happen according to the word. And then you begin to utter it. You begin to declare it with your mouth. You begin to commune with that reality in your speech. You begin to declare it. You begin to allow it to come out of your mouth. But you see, the work had been done on the inside first. The work had been done by the pondering, by the careful thinking, by the contemplating, by the dwelling on. And then once, 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 once you see there's a settling of that reality on the inside, you begin to declare with your mouth. Amen? You have not taken the exam yet, but you still declare it from a distance. Hallelujah. You don't even say, I will pass the exam. You say, that exam is a success for me. Amen? But now somebody is speaking, not just, you're not, you're not being presumptuous. No, no. Jesus came down from the mountain. He was not trying to walk on water. There's no trying. You can't try to do that. He spent so much time in the word and in communion with reality on the mountain. He just stepped on circumstances. That's what meditation does. Once you allow it, it builds on the inside. It gives you the reality. You can walk on things. He came down, just walked on it. He didn't come and put his foot and tested it and say, you know, can I walk? No. The reality that you're meditating on will tell you if you can walk or not. And let me just say this to you. You can, you can, take, you can, you can meditate while I'm talking, but, but for meditation to really be effective, there are no shortcuts. It's a process. You give yourself. We're coming there. We're coming there. Let me know worship. You know, we're coming there. Amen. It's not a quick fix. In other words, I take that same scripture again. By his stripes I'm healed. I'm going to school. You know, I'm, 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 thinking, I'm thinking the scripture. I'm not thinking about. I'm thinking that scripture. I'm thinking the scripture. By his stripes. By his stripes. What are his stripes? His tri I can see that. I can see that. I can see that. Amen? I can see that. You know, there's an exchange that I can see that. If he was who he was, if he was in my place, I see him. I, in other words, I see myself there in him. Taking that judgment. That's me. See, I, I, my intention is, that is just to show you practical things so you can apply it. I can see myself in that his death. As I'm thinking that reality, I see myself taking that judgment. If that reality builds strong enough, no other judgment can hold me down. I want you to see something. That is what meditation does. Because I've, I've pondered. 
I've dwelt on, I've chewed on, I've given it time. And my mind is set on it. <laughs> the life and the light in it is revealed on, or released on the inside of me. Now I can, I can boldly say that thing like this, that one, that one cannot happen to me because I have taken time to chew that reality. Amen? Hallelujah. Are you with me? I said Jesus came walking. <laughs> he came walking the fourth world. In other words, first watch, second watch, third watch, fourth watch. Guess light had been released over that period of time. Maybe you're leaving the house in the morning, putting the scripture, your Bible study in the morning, or your morning devotion, and you get the word. Maybe that's just the first watch. But as you step out, don't listen to me. Don't become this, don't do this religious stuff. Say, oh, I've done my Bible study for today. No, no. Morning devotions don't transform people by itself. I, I, whoa, 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 why do you say that? But <laughs> people have done morning devotions for a long time. They have not grown in the Lord. Because they thought as I finished that morning, I put my pen by my bed. That's it. I'll see you again tomorrow morning. No, it's the first watch. Take whatever you studied with you. Take the word. Put it in your consciousness and go with it. And begin to think about. Listen. Let your, give your mind the opportunity to break up, to break. Listen, as you put it there, you're going throughout the day. Your mind is set on it. You'll be entering the second watch. Amen. By the time, by the time, by the time you're in the third watch from midnight to 3 a.m., I'm telling you, that scripture is, is you're blasting it from your mouth. By the time you get back home in the evening from that day, you're reading the fourth watch. You have chewed it all day. It has created pictures. You are in the visualization. You are seeing it now. It's now a reality. It's not just, because in the morning you studied. You read and studied. But during the day you meditated. And then by the time you came home, you're ready to practice it. Amen? The, it's in the fourth watch that you walk over circumstance, not in the first watch. <laughs> Jesus came in the fourth watch of the night and walked on water. So don't, if you stay in the first watch alone, you may not overcome. You may know the scripture by memory, but you may not be able to overcome the circumstance. Amen? Give it time. Let it move with you. Let it move with you into the second and third. And by the time you're in the fourth watch, the scripture is speaking. Hallelujah. Engage your thoughts. And it doesn't sound real simple, but listen. I was sitting there this time, I'm like, what am I going to tell these people? Listen, let me give you things that you can practice. And I just I can give you a sermon, but it, uh, you may not practice it. Engage your thoughts. Engage your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts. Your thinking, engage it. In the word of God. Again, that is the place that the enemy fights the most. Whom the God of this world has blinded the minds. The minds. While they end up not believing because the mind is blinded. And that shows you where your focus prayer should be. We are praying for somebody. Let the scales fall off the minds. Let darkness be lifted up the minds. Let the eyes of the mind open. You see now how to target prayer. How to pray for somebody who is struggling to believe. That's the area. The God of Israel has blinded the minds of them that believe not. They do not believe because of something. And it's the blindness. And the blindness is not natural. The enemy did it. 
And even believers, even though you are saved, but there's still some level of blindness. As we meditate, hallelujah, the light takes over. Amen? God's idea, you know, is that our minds will be filled with the word of God. The word will, 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 will challenge and overcome and break the limitations of our mind. That's what Colossians 3.16 says. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. If it, do, if it dwells richly, lavishly, your mind, it will be popping in your mind. You will be thinking word. Your, your, mind, your mind will be a thinking zone for the word of God. There's no way you, you, you can be a person who meditates day and night like the scripture says and then you fail. It's not going to happen. And I, I'm saying to myself, to all of us, listen, I'm putting myself in this reality, in this season. Amen? Amen? Are you with me? Philippians 2 verse 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let this mind, that kind of thinking. He said, let that kind of thinking that Jesus had, let that same thinking be in you. Because what meditation will achieve there is that you start thinking God's thoughts. You start thinking like God. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ. In other words, God is saying, think like me. But meditation will produce that. Hallelujah. Second scripture. Go, go now to that. Um, uh, First Timothy. Come on, say with me. I'm pondering. I'm contemplating. I'm dwelling on. And I'm chewing the word of God. I'm visualizing it. And I'm practicing it. In this season. I'm engaging my thoughts and I'm prayerfully ponder, pondering the word of God. Listen, the results will speak for themselves. Amen? Let's give ourselves to it. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Let's do it. Paul said meditate. I mean, if you, you, you read the preceding scripture verses and you will see what he said. We don't have time to do all of that. He said meditate upon these things. These things. There are some things to meditate. Meditate upon these things. He didn't say just know them. He said meditate upon these things. And we've taken time to define what meditate is or meditation is. Meditate upon things. These things. It means, you know, I don't, I don't want to do the Greek thing, give you the Greek word. It don't, it don't really, I mean, I can give you, but it don't really matter. You know, some of you love to hear Greek. You feel like you're really studying. Amen. The, <laughs> the, the Greek word is militao. If you like that, if it helps you, if it blesses your spirit. You know, in other words, allow the word to dwell, to settle in your mind. Revolve it, revolve it, revolve it in your mind. Revolve it. Amen. As you're going home tonight, amen. Whatever you're believing for, take word that has spoken concerning it. Put it in your mind. Let it revolve. Amen. Let it revolve. Let it revolve. Let it revolve. Because you see that, that scripture in Psalms. The psalmist says, Why I he said, my eyes, my eyes stay open. Why in my night watches? So I'm laying in bed. But I'm moving from one watch. I'm moving because my mind is engaged while I'm laying in bed. The worst thing you would do for you, let me just put at this there. When you're going to sleep, you're laying in bed, you're trying to sleep. Please, I'm begging. If you're going to put music, put music that is believing music. Because you wake up, something else has taken, has settled in your spirit. You'll be singing it in your dream. You know it's true, right? The way you guys are answering in the affirmative, that, that man. But that's the truth. That's the truth. Because those are hours where you can shift your life from one watch to another. You allow something else to settle in your soul that is not giving you the ability to receive light from God. If you're going to be listening to anything, let it be something that is blessing your spirit. Because you know you can sleep, but your spirit will be hearing. You can be listening to audio Bible. You don't need to follow the whole thing. I mean, you can't pick up because you're sleeping, of course. But you can just wake up and you just, you, something just, hallelujah. You're enriched. 
because your spirit does not sleep. Amen? The body sleeps, the mind tries to rest, but the spirit does not. The spirit is in the image of God. God neither sleeps nor slumber. He doesn't get tired. The spirit can gain a posture. A posture. A posture of stability and rest. You know, the spirit can enter a dimension where it's, it's posturing in rest. It's confident. Where you're just believing. You, you just know that you know. It means your spirit is resting in reality. But you train your spirit. It doesn't happen by chance. You train your spirit to enter that reality. And meditation will still produce that. You just know that you know that you know your spirit is so is so is full of assurance that nothing nothing bad will happen or nothing bad will overtake me or success must happen. I mean, you just your spirit is at home, it's resting. Amen. It's that kind of bed. It doesn't necessarily get tired because it's in the image of God. Amen. So, so Paul said, meditate, meditate upon these things. Meditate. Now look at that. Meditate. Revolve in your mind. Attend to it carefully. Give, it, give yourself. Ponder. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. What is it that you want to see? Say, think about it. Ponder it. Allow it to take root in your mind. Because if the word of God does not take hold of your mind, something else will take hold of your mind. You know that in Romans chapter, 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 chapter 8, verse 5, I think verse 5, he said, he said, he said to, be, to be carnally, he said, you know, put that from, put that, let's see that. He said, for they that are after the flesh, the mind, the mind, they set their mind on the things of the flesh. Their mind is set in a particular way. Verse 5, verse 5. You know, they that are after the flesh do mind. In other words, their minds are filled with the things of the flesh. That's why they live like that. What, is, what the mind has taken hold of is what is, the life is going to be like. They do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, they mind. So in other words, hey, are you after the spirit of God? You want to see the spirit of God manifest? He said, fill your mind with the things of the spirit. Mind the things. Be mindful of the things of the Spirit. Let your mind be full of the things of the Spirit. The Spirit will have access, will have free course in your life. Hallelujah. Dwell on. Dwell on. Go back to that, that first Timothy. Dwell on. Dwell on. Study and dwell on. Study and dwell on. Ponder. Man, can you see how the society, the day in which we live, how, how it is really contrary to this kind of life. Time. This, it needs time. This kind of life God is telling you, it needs time to sit somewhere and say, you know what? I'm just going to think and allow the word to just settle. I just, I, it's settling, I'm speaking it. I'm, I'm, I'm in communion with my spirit. The word is settling. I'm thinking it. I'm beginning to picture it. I'm beginning to picture it. I'm declaring what I'm picturing. I want you to see this. It's not, it's, again, Eastern meditation says, empty your mind. You need to empty your mind. No, we're not trying to empty our minds. We're trying to allow something to take root in our minds. The God substance to take root. The God reality. Once you give yourself, it settles. It settles. You start seeing it. That's what, that's what, the, that's what the spies the spies said. There's, again, meditation can be either positive or negative. What, what did the ten spies say? They say, look, look at what they say. They say, we are grasshoppers in our eyes. That's how we see ourselves. So they have just the situation. They say, ah. They have thought about how wicked the giants are. They have thought about how difficult the land is. They have thought, of, and then now they began to see themselves as grasshoppers. Guess what? The moment you're in the visualization, 
positive or negative, they visualize themselves as grasshoppers. And then what did they say? They said, that's how the giants see us too. So in other words, you, if you cannot see yourself one way and then the circumstance see you in another way. <laughs> we see ourselves first as grasshoppers in our own eyes. Then the giants see us like that too. They were pondering, but they were in the negative. They were pondering, but they were in the negative. They said, we see ourselves, visualize it. They, you know, they had meditated, pictures, they had thought about, they had sat down, they, they even had conversations. Man, how are we going to overcome this people? These people are big, you know, they're going to kill us. So they have been thinking, they have been pondering, they have allowed that thought of defeat to take root. And there was no way they could overcome that. There was no way. Tell somebody I'm premeditating my victory. Come and say I'm premeditating my. You know they say pre, that death was premeditated. What do you think that means? Somebody sat down and thought about it. And pictured how it's going to happen. They pictured everything. They they visualized. They pictured how I'm gonna I'm gonna wait at the, you know uh, yeah, I'm gonna ambush you. I'm gonna do this here. They premeditated. They put careful thought into it, and then they practiced. So they pondered, they visualized, and they practiced. You see that. You imagine. What are you like? You're imagining something. You are, your mind is imagining something. And that's part of meditation. Praise God. Praise God. So once, once, you, once you ponder, you start creating those pictures. You start creating those pictures in your mind. You're creating those pictures in your mind. You're creating those pictures in your mind. By the time you're doing that, you're already, you're already building something. Whether positive or negative. You're already building something. Your mind is in serious work. Because you've given your mind for that very purpose. You're thinking, you're, pondering, you're visualizing. And then before you know it, the pictures become stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Most of the things that we do, even on the negative side, we thought them too long. I've tested, you know, I, I love practicals. I've tested it. I said, let me think about this and see how my body's going to react. Boom. Immediately, my body's responding. All the things you fell into that you did not like, that's how they started. You thought about them and then your body responded to them. And then you, and then, and then you practiced it. You pondered and visualized. But you're going to use it positively in this season. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Paul said, look, look, at, look at the next, what he said next. Go back to that. Go back to that. 1 Timothy 4.15. Meditate upon this thing. He said, give yourself entirely to them. Woo, that's the part that takes a lot. He said, give yourself entirely. In other words, if I'm going to give myself to a reality, I give myself by meditation. Give yourself entirely, entirely. As I'm meditating, my whole self is becoming, is becoming a part of that. I'm giving. You, there's, no, there's no half measures. There's no way you will see full reality without completely being given to it. He said, give yourself wholly, entirely to these things. Meditate, give yourselves, give yourselves. In other words, that, that thing that God said is true. I give my, I think about it, I let it have its way in my life. My mind is full of it. I'm thinking it, I'm speaking it, I'm picturing it. Listen to those words. I'm thinking it, I'm speaking it. I'm <laughs> you, so you're believing God. You, you can't believe God with those things I just said. I'm thinking it. I'm speaking it. I'm picturing it. So he's telling Paul, he's telling Timothy, give yourself in thinking these things, picturing these things. Give yourself. Give yourself completely. Give yourself wholly. 
entirely. Make it your life. Make it your life. Throw yourself completely. Abandon yourself to it. Because it's not just a... <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Look at what the man said. Meditate upon. He said, meditate, meditate, meditate. You know, meditate. Let me, let me, let me look at that, that initial definition again. You know, digest, digest. Spiritual digestion. Digest this thing. Digest them. Digest them. Digest them. That's what I'm telling you. The things we teach, if you don't go back and watch the videos or read your notes that you took, you, you will not get much from them. You will not. He, he said, he, he look, it, digest those things. Absorb those truths into your life. Think through them. Think them through. Think them through. Think them through. As you're thinking, let your mouth be uttering the things, the same things. You know? You're thinking, you're th as you're thinking, you're thinking the exam that's coming, you're thinking the word of God says, hey, you know, the scripture we use on Sunday, he said, you know, I'm wiser than my teacher because I meditate in that truth. You're seeing yourself, you know, uh, you're succeeding in that exam. You're succeeding in that, you stop, you, you, as your thinking is strong, pictures of your success start popping into your spirit. As those pictures begin to pop, you begin to declare now, I am, I'm a success in that exam. Uh, so that's, that's meditation. Thinking, speaking, picturing. You start declaring it. You don't, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait because you have a prophetic spirit. You don't have to wait for it to happen first. Amen? He says, give yourself wholly, wholly to them. Wholly to them. Someone says, I'm meditating. I'm abandoning myself to the reality. And then look at what is happening. What's going to happen? This is the outcome. This is the outcome. This is the outcome. Look at the next verse. Okay, that's the verse. That's the verse right there. The same verse. He said, you're profiting. Somebody say, you're profiting. Your progress, your advancement, your furtherance will be evident to all. Oh, my God. He said, there will be an evidence that somebody has meditated and somebody has given themselves to truth. He said, your, your advancement, your progress, and your profiting will be evident to all. It will appear to all. What is that thing that you want to do that you haven't given yourself to meditation about? What is that result that we want to see that we have not given ourselves to meditate strongly on it? The secret of that happening is in meditating in that reality. So everyone will be able to see that you're moving forward. Everyone will see your progress. Everyone will notice your improvement. People will see before their eyes that there's progress, that there's evidence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing that, that Paul said in Romans chapter 12. He said, hey, do not be conformed to this world. Do not, do not allow the patterns of this world to fill your mind. The, the ways, the mannerisms of this world to fill your mind. No, he said, but be transformed by the renewing. The, it, of what again? The mind. Somebody said the mind. My God. You see, Spiritual people have not valued the mind enough. The thing that the mind is, is, is not spiritual. People pray all night, but they don't think for five minutes. <laughs> You've prayed all night, but your mind has not worked for five minutes. I mean, your mind has not worked constructively about what you're praying for. But you've been praying because they don't understand the role of the mind. The, if the mind is handled in meditation, it will produce transformation. It will be transformed 
by the renewing of your mind. Now you'll be able to prove what is the perfect, inacceptable, you know, will of God. So you can know what God is saying, what God is doing. You can know the plan of God. You can be able to follow God in, in his project once the mind has given way. But that's what meditation does. Amen? Amen? So in this season, this is what's happening. In this season, even as you lay in your bed, just like David, he said, my eyes stay open. Even when my physical eyes close up, my, my, the eyes of my mind stay open. I'm thinking, see, the last, thing that, the last thing that happened before I fell asleep is the thought that my mind was set on. Let me fall asleep in the middle of that scripture. That's what it means to give yourself completely. You know, let, let, my mind, let my mind be connected to that scripture and I fall asleep in it. Guess what will happen? There's are times when you begin to see the angel of God walk into the room to finish helping you understand it. I know things I'm saying, it sounds simple, but I'm telling you, while you were in the, you were digging, you were meditating, you were, you were pondering, you were contemplating, and then you fell asleep in it. That's how you have visions. Because now in your sleep, the angel of God, the spirit of God will help you move from one watch to another will bring the full reality in your spirit. And you wake up with a full revelation because of how you went to sleep. David, look, let's look at that then we'll round up, we're done. Look at what he said there. Look at what he said there again. You know, in, 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 in Psalm 119 verse 4. He said, my eyes stay open through. So I'm, 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 pictu I'm picturing something while I'm in bed. I started telling myself, it's not time to fall asleep on Instagram. Because you have a dream of the last picture you saw. <laughs> the last 30 minutes, the last hour before you sleep, you spend the last hour meditating on the flesh. And then you fall asleep in the middle of it. And then you want God to talk to you in, the, in your sleep. How? Your soul is full of the world. How is God going to talk to you? He will talk, you will not get it. Look at, look at him, a spiritual man. He said, my eye, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in bed, but my eyes. I'm meditating in your word. I'm thinking it. I'm thinking it. Don't matter if I fall asleep. Don't matter. You say, if I lay in bed, what if I fall asleep? Don't, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good way to fall asleep. You have visions of the night. And while your body is laying in bed, you'll be in the realm of the spirit. By meditation. It, you, you have passed through a door and you're somewhere. While you're in bed. Because you entered the scripture while you were laying there. Amen. Oh, I love that scripture. My eyes stay open. Through the night watches. So by the time I'm waking up. In the early watches. You know in the fourth watch. I'm waking up. I'm not waking up the same person who went to sleep. Because I went, when I went to sleep. I, maybe I was in the first or second watch. By the time I wake up. You may not even have a vision. But as you wake up at 5 a.m. to pray, you find out that my prayer is just flowing. Instead of that kind of prayer where <laughs> you start praying and then you find out when they were saying my mind is sound. <laughs> my body's healthy. But you realize that you get up, you are just flowing. God, you may not even have a vision. But your spirit has marinated. Oh, I tell you. The psalm, if you read the psalm, you'll see David's secret a lot. He said, in my night watches. A lot. The same thing happened to Daniel. Daniel said, why I lay my head down in my bed? And think the th as I start thinking, 
God gave me a vision. Look at that. What was he thinking about? The word of God. As I started thinking, I laid, he didn't say I was, no, I laid down, I started thinking. And I was in the visions of God. You don't know what is in store for us this month. I'm telling you, what will enter in this month? I myself, I'm ready for it. Amen? I'm praying, believing God for my own life. I'm ready. I said, Lord, you know what? I want to travel with you in the word of God. I want to leave behind those scriptures. Not just the paper. I want to leave the reality behind those writings. And meditation will push you into those realities. Stand on your feet tonight. Stand on your feet. Amen? Take time, take time. It don't have to be long in a day. You can just take, you can just take, see, train, because your mind is so, your mind has not been trained that way. It will be hard. Let me tell you what's going to happen in you. You take a skill, you start thinking. Before you know you're thinking, you're thinking something else. Your mind just switched. You will find, you will find that how strong your mind is, worldly. It is worldly strength. It's how much you can stay, your mind can stay focused on the word. But don't, don't, don't get scared about it. Listen, just go back. You find your mind as sweet, just go back. I want to make, I want, see, this is, I hope this is practical enough for you. You, you start, you're thinking, you know, you're, you're praying, you're praying, you're thinking, you're praying, you're thinking, you're speaking the word. And then you find out, you're thinking about, oh, I was at Walmart. You just think Walmart. How many of you have done, that's happened to you before? You, you don't even know when you went to Walmart. But that tells you something. Their mind needs more discipline. Just go back. Just push it back. And keep the focus in that word. Stay on it. Stay on it. It, 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 it gets distracted. Go back. It's training. You can do, maybe you can do just two minutes to start with. Don't, 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 don't bother. Just keep doing it. Daily, make up your mind. You move to five minutes. Hey, don't bother. Keep moving. Fifteen minutes. You're, you're moving to the second watch. Amen. Before you know it, ah, you can lay down 30 minutes. You are traveling. And you can actually take a hold of your future while you are laying in your bed. In the word of God. Because, but you have traveled from the first watch. And by the time, by the time it's said and done, turbulence of the waters have nothing on you because you're walking on top of it. Because you have traveled in the watches of the night and you are living the reality amen i hope this helped you so I, I hope i'm hoping so you know apply it don't just hear don't just hear my goal is not to teach so you just hear apply this reality because i'm applying it as i'm talking you see one of the deceptions of people who teach or preach the word is that you know they, they preach to come and you know they study to come and preach and they get this wonderful message and then they teach it, they get excited but they have not practiced it I'm busting bubbles. But I'm telling you, you'll be amazed that people will hear it, they grow, you are not growing. Ah, it's the, it's the, it is the folly of the minister. People that you are, they are growing, you are not. Because they are getting what, the things that you are teaching and growing, you have taught them you are happy. But you didn't practice it. It's a mistake. You see those declarations? I would take them myself and read them. I'm like, if they come declaring, church, people are declaring it, working for them. I'm not declaring it. So I, God gave me, I came up with it, but I'm not declaring it for myself. I'm like, what? That's me cheating myself. Come on, I put these things to work. Come on, ask God to say, Father, I'm giving myself to, I'm giving myself completely to whatever God has said. Come on, come on, pray. It's just a simple prayer. Father, I'm giving myself completely, wholly. He said, give yourself entirely. He said, meditate on this. Give yourself entirely entirely. He said there is and there is a reward. Your profiting will be evident. We don't just meditate for the sake of it. We meditate because there is a profit that it comes with it. He said your profiting will be evident. Will be evident. Your profiting will be evident. Let your mind not be idle. Let your mind go to work in this season. Engage your thoughts in the word of God. Use your thoughts. Engage reality. Think it. Picture it. Visualize it. Speak it. Talk it. Commune with it. Commune with what God has said. 
sit down with what God has said and have fellowship with it and talk it and allow it to, to settle. Chew it, chew it, chew it over and over and over and over. You will see the reality will start working for you. Amen. Hallelujah. By the time you're done with that scripture, you'll be in the fourth watch because as far as that scripture is concerned, and you will come out from the mountain walking on top of the circumstance because somebody has taken time to meditate. I told you Isaac meditated. The Bible says he went to the field to meditate. By the time he lifted up his eyes, he saw his reward coming in front of him. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. I declare upon you tonight, hallelujah, that your reward will manifest. That the profiting will be evident. There will be evidence in this season. There will be evidence in this season. There will be a clear profit of our meditation. There will be a clear evidence of our meditation. There will be a clear, there will be a clear, that people will be able to point it out that something has changed by reason of your meditation and let that be oh god a lifestyle that is permanent in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit in the name of jesus amen and amen and amen hallelujah amen amen i hope you have you receive some tools that you can put to work because that's the goal that you can put to work you can put to work. You can put to work. Give yourself. Give yourself wholly. Amen. You have your love offering. Take it out. Just thank God and drop it out here. Just thank God. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for, for truth, for reality. And drop it. If you can you give it online, just, just give online. Father, we thank you for seed. We receive it with thanksgiving. We thank you for, 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 the, for the multiplication of it. Thank you, Lord, for... For the blessing that come with that 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 practicing that reality, we thank you. The Bible says you give seed and you give bread. Father, give seed to those who need it. Hallelujah. Give bread to those who need it. Lord, we thank you. We love you tonight, and we thank you for reality. This is our season to experience manifestation. We receive manifestations. We receive grace for meditation. We receive grace for prayer. We receive grace for contemplating with God. We receive grace for coming and reasoning with God. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I'm a righteous man. My mind is sound. My body is healthy. My future is bright and glorious. I'm a righteous man. My mind is sound. My body's healthy. My future is bright and glorious. Come on again. I'm a righteous man. My mind is sound. My body's healthy. My future is bright and glorious. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. What will happen to you is that you realize that those thoughts that used to be strong in your head, you realize that they come in, boom, they don't even have, the, have place because something else has taken root. Hallelujah. It is well with you. You can succeed. You can create your success in your meditation. And you can create your reality that you want to see right in, the, in, in your time alone with God. Amen. We'll see you on Sunday. Again, invite somebody. Don't come alone because Sunday we will really get deep into it. Amen.